We have here Adam and Iva from Asheville, and they're gonna we're gonna do a little cacao demonstration. So one of the biggest questions I get is when people get our cacao is um, they're not quite sure what to do with it, except eat it, obviously, which it's absolutely delicious just eating it out of hand. Um, and yeah, so um, sometimes people will even ask me, like, why don't they melt when I put them in a pan? And, you know, there's a big difference between cacao and chocolate. Cacao is a not a raw. It's a processed agricultural product. It's been shelled. It's been roasted lightly. Um, but it's definitely not chocolate yet. It's a long way from being chocolate. So today I'm going to show you guys how to make a very rustic chocolate at home with your cacao and uh, answer a few common questions and clear up some misperceptions. So one of the most common uh, questions I'll get is, do I sell raw cacao? This is raw cacao. So if you've ever gotten a bag and it says like raw cacao nibs on it, um, it's not quite true. This is raw cacao, okay? Good, but you can taste it. Go ahead and sample that for us, guys. So the, these are the seeds, and the seeds are surrounded by a very sweet, tart, white pulp. That is, what do you guys think of the cacao pulp? Sweet. It tastes fruity. Yeah, it's fruity and sweet, right? Does it taste anything like chocolate? No. 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 Okay, <laughs> so, um, yeah, so cacao, it comes in this nice little fruity container. And then it's called to chupar, to suck on the pulp. And then once you do that, you can start to see the seed underneath. Okay, and then uh, I've got other videos showing how we ferment the seeds and everything, so we don't need to get into that. But just to clear up this misperception, this is raw cacao. So this is cacao that has been very lightly roasted and hand shelled. You'll notice that it's not crushed, but um, that's about what we're going to do now. Okay, guys, so go ahead and put some of that cacao into the grinder. So this is a very old-fashioned device. If you ever happen to see one of these at a garage sale or um, a yard sale or anything called a Corona Molino, I highly recommend picking one of these up. You can also use it for coffee. Um, you can grind chestnuts or acorns with it. You can grind corn in it. You can make your own flour. It's basically a mill. It's a very old-fashioned mill. So go ahead and start uh, giving us a little spin with that, Iva. There we go. So it's starting to break the cacao up into small pieces. And this would be great to use pieces that are this small to make a trail mix. Uh, to just toss into a salad to use as a topping for a soup or for a chili. So one of my main goals to educate people about the use of cacao is that it is so much more than chocolate. It's an actual food in and of itself. So these guys have been eating some of my savory cacao dishes. We had a cacao peanut sauce. Um, what do you guys think of cacao as a food and not just a chocolate precursor? It's a tasty addition. It has yeah. a smoky flavor and compliments. Aroma as well. Awesome. Okay. Okay, so now what we have here is, like I said, a cacao that is ready to be used for sauces, chili, soup, salad, uh, add to your granola, add to your yogurt, add to your uh, favorite, like, uh, cookie mix. You could make, like, cacao chip cookies instead of chocolate chip cookies. And keep in mind, guys, this is a super nutritious food. It's loaded with minerals and antioxidants, healthy fats, proteins, um, and no sugar. Okay, unlike chocolate, there's no sugar in cacao. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to put it back in the Molino, and we adjusted these uh, the spinning plates on the Molino now so that they're closer together, and now we're going to grind the cacao. Okay, so we're going to grind it one more time to get it nice and pasty, and we're also going to add some cinnamon. You can just throw that right in there. You guys, you could add chili peppers if you want more of like a spicy mix. You could add some... Um, cardamom, you could add a nutmeg, um, whatever you want to flavor your cacao with, some vanilla beans, this would be a great time to add your uh, spices of choice and then grind them right along with the cacao. So you're getting a really um, flavorful and potent experience here. Awesome. do is now we're going to make a very rustic chocolate out of our cacao. This is really easy. So we've got our cacao, we've got it ground to like a really fine, pasty, crumbly mix here. 
And uh, we've got one of our bags that we sell our cocoa beans in. These bags are um, made with completely with uh, sugarcane fibers and the inside is not wax. This is actually a resin from palm trees. So it's completely compostable, completely eco-friendly. The dye is also just vegetable dye, completely non-toxic. But the reason why we're gonna use the inside of this bag is because it works just like a wax paper without being a wax paper. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix in a little bit of panela, which is like a, a very rustic brown sugar, basically like a crystallized molasses from our area. We're gonna mix it up a little bit just to give it just a tiny little bit of a chocolatey sweetness, not too much. And then we're gonna put this in our bag. flatten it out a little bit. And then we're gonna use the bag to compress the chocolate into a little candy bar, basically. So you can just go like this. That might be a little bit too much. Oh, it was already compressed, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna fold it over. And you can use anything. You can use a mason jar, you can use a pestle, you can use the bottom of a wine bottle. I mean, it is, well, it was 2020, so I'm sure we've all got a lot of wine bottles sitting around the house. And uh, let's give it a good compression. And there you go. You guys want to try that? And the long, if you put it in the refrigerator and you let it set, it will actually turn into a nice chocolate bar but we're just gonna nibble on it fresh. There we go. Mm. Hold on.